Hello everyone, it's another day and another router web interface. So this one is the Technicolor, or as previously known as Thompson, TG589VNV3 router. Um, and let's log in. So initially on first login you get a um, summary screen. The username and password in, on, in my case is managed by the internet provider so other internet providers will probably just have the default one of admin and then the serial number of the router or administrator with a capital A and then the serial number of the router. Um, as I say in my case uh, I had to request access to the router because previously it was a managed router um, so they've set a, a custom username which your one certainly won't be called customer admin for the uh, username. Anyway, so you log in, you get um, the broadband connection, oh, well, say so the router details, the broadband connection details, it's connected to a VDSL or an, in, an infinity style uh, broadband line in the UK. Uh, the uptime, the synchronization speed, which is the maximum line rate in my case for the, uh, for the infinity type service that it's connected to. Um, and some statistics about the line, the attenuation signal to noise ratio, um, power and everything, the connection type, so some providers it might be just uh, Ethernet, uh, in this case it's PPPoE, and then uh, the wireless details, and let's see what happens, you can either go direct to the wireless configuration, but I'm going to go straight to advanced options, and then from here on it looks like it's pretty much the same as most of the old Technicolor routers um, so how do we change wireless settings I click on wireless and the other way of getting to this is via home network and then click on the wireless there summary screen let's go to configure So not a lot to see there really. SSID name, channel selection, whether you want it automatic or manual. Um, doesn't have any of the, oh, it does have power reduction enabled which I believe if that's ticked, uh, if nothing is connected to your wireless I think it transmits its beacon. Um, less often, so if you're then looking for the wireless network in the list of wireless networks on a laptop you might have to wait a minute or so for it to appear uh, because it doesn't, it's not constantly transmitting. So what other options do we have? Let's go from there. Nothing particularly exciting there. nothing exciting at all. So let's go to broadband connection and start with the DSL services. That's pretty much the details which are on that front screen except it shows you the vendor ID of... well it doesn't even show you the vendor ID of the remote. Oh it does, uh, vendor chip, chipset, Broadcom chipset in the um, Huawei VDSL cabinet that it's connected to and error states of the line. Internet services, view more. Details. Now that's quite a lot of information which our previous routers didn't, or I don't remember previous routers giving you, so it's got the concentrator name. Um, if you click on disconnect it will then allow you to change the password but because I'm accessing this remotely uh, clicking disconnect would be a very bad idea. And into the toolbox. Remote assistance which I think is remote admin. Yes, definitely is. Um, I'm accessing this by connecting via SSH to a server uh, in the building and then jumping over to the router. Firewall levels, 
and this just basically looks like nothing special really because these this style and interface of router has been around for probably eight years dynamic DNS which providers does it support mm, no IP and DT DNS and uh, the GNU one so you can use that with any provider that supports GNU DIP and then the horrible Dyn DNS who used to give free services and then uh, with little to no warning stopped. Content sharing, so if you plug in a memory stick into the router which has a USB port or um, a portable hard disk then you can use it as almost like a NAS. Game and application sharing which is where you'd set up port forwards which in fact there you go you can see is my uh, port forward that I have set up. I'm going to be interested to see. Yep, that's the only user in there. Right, so to the home network, and um, you can see things that have been connected. And that's my laptop there, and then the, that one there is the SSH server I'm connected to. But yes, DT104 is very interesting. I'll have to dig through and, uh, and work out who's plugged in on a site which uh, shouldn't have anyone plugging in. Alright, going back to there, and that's the network map showing you what's connected. Click on devices, pretty much similar thing but in a different different view. I wonder if we go configure, what do we get? We can just delete the devices. Let's have a quick look at that one. I wonder if that DT140 is from when it was being provisioned at the internet provider? Maybe. Some device access scheduling, which I presume means that you can turn off your uh, children's internet at certain times, maybe, so it would schedule uh, which MAC addresses or which devices can connect at what times, possibly. Interfaces, if you click on that, it just takes you back to the wireless settings, which we've already seen. Local area network gives you, um, and under configure, gives you all the IP addresses of the device, so you can click on that one change the IP address of the router, you can click on edit on DHCP pools, change the DHC, DHCP information wireless environment, and that's definitely something I've never seen before a pretty little Wi-Fi analyzer graph it shows you which channels are in use, so um, you can decide yourself which uh, channel you should be on, or at least see w you know why your internet might be behaving quite so poorly uh, if you're using wireless in a very congested area. Yeah, it's quite an interesting service built into the router. Anyway, back to the home network, and yeah, we've been into wireless environment. Then a final one to help which brings up a pop-up box, which isn't really that exciting. So uh, there you have it. The uh, not particularly groundbreaking TG589 VNV3 um, a couple of other places I guess to look at would be under media access gateway configuration in save and restore is where you'd save and restore the, in the configuration if you wanted to back it up then factory reset the router for some reason or try a different configuration um, and then you'd just restore the file back to it if you wanted to go back to the settings that you were at um, let's see quickly if there's any mention of IPv6, which there isn't. Uh, let's try and check connectivity to the internet, that'll be uh, interesting. Only one entry there. Yeah, it's, it's essentially a pretty bog-standard router. With, uh, an inter a web interface that has been around for a long time, so not a lot to uh, show you or explain.